Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing really, really well and you're staying healthy and you're managing to cope with everything that's going on. Today I'm just gonna be talking a little bit about how to book musicians and what we wish you knew before you start the process. So yeah, stay tuned and let's get into it. Now, last week I put out a video on musicians working for free and when that is and when that isn't okay and all of those things. So if you do wanna watch that, I shall link that up here. But yeah, this video is kind of leading on from that and it's more directed at people who are going to be looking to booking some musicians. Obviously, lots of weddings have been put off, some until next year, and so you might be thinking, oh, maybe, you know, if we've got a little bit more time to save, maybe we wanna put a bit more into live music and all of that. Highly recommend you do, obviously. And so I wanted to put out a video that basically goes through, from a performer's perspective, what we kind of wish people booking us for their events knew before they get in contact. Oh, and before I forget, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel if you are enjoying it so far. And I mean, to be fair, if this is the first video that you're watching of mine, you may not know if you like me, but just subscribe because then, you know, I'll, I'll pop up every now and again. You might think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give that a little watch. Maybe, maybe, maybe you won't. And that's, that's okay. That's, that's okay. But just subscribe. I mean, you know, what, what have you got to lose? Now, before you even start going down the road of actually booking musicians, do you figure out whether you require professional musicians or if high level amateurs will be able to fulfill your criteria perfectly well. There are obviously pros and cons to both, which I'll go through, but it is just worth establishing from the very, very off so that everybody is on the same page. A professional musician is somebody who plays an instrument or instruments to a very, very high level and their main source of income is from playing. An amateur musician is somebody who plays just for the love of music. Their main source of income is not performing. The main and obvious difference between the two is the money. <laughs> if you don't have the budget to pay your musicians beyond maybe expenses or maybe you're just intending to feed them, then amateur musicians is gonna be the route you wanna go down. As a professional musician, it can be quite tricky when we get asked to work for very, very low rates or nothing in some cases, because this is our job and we have to try and politely decline and that can get a little bit awkward. If it's somebody's job, you need to be paying them accordingly. If your event is maybe a sponsored one, maybe you're entertaining clients or something of that ilk, or if it's a wedding and includes moments such as the entrance of the bride, or maybe they're playing during the signing of the register or the first dance, these are quite high pressure scenarios. So I would very, very much recommend you go for a professional setup as they will be better equipped and just more experienced and able to handle that level of pressure. However, if you're booking musicians with the view to them being a background kind of music feature just to add a bit of ambience to an event, then some high level amateur players will more than fulfill that brief. You save a bit of money and that could be a really, really good compromise. So in a nutshell, professionals will have a high level of technical expertise on their instrument professional level of equipment. They should have good communication and organization as this is their job and they do it day to day. And they'll have a greater range of music. So their music library will be much more extensive. So you'll have a lot more choice if you want to request specific music or songs, etc. Now the cons are pretty obvious and kind of simple. They're gonna be more expensive and they may also already be booked on the day of your event, particularly if it's late notice. Now when it comes to booking high level amateurs, then obviously the biggest pro is that they're gonna be a lot cheaper, potentially free and they're gonna be more likely to be flexible on things like timing, so maybe staying a little bit later than originally agreed upon and all that kind of thing. The cons with amateur players is that their set list is likely to be not quite as extensive and they're not going to have as much experience of playing under pressure, which can be quite a clincher when it comes to, like I said, things like weddings and you're under quite a lot of pressure to perform to a high standard. 
So once you've established which camp you sort of want to go with, the next thing to think about is obviously, as far as costs go, the cost and the price and everything will vary wildly depending on the size of the band, what time of day it is, how far they have to travel, all of that. So I'm not going to go into the detail of that now just because there's too many variables. But a really good indicator is the Musicians Union site. They have two kind of price brackets a casual stage rate and a national gig rate. So check them out, I'll leave them linked below and that'll give you a good ballpark figure of what you'll be expecting to pay for a professional lineup. Now, the obvious way of booking musicians is through an agency website because you can you can scroll through, you can see lots and lots of different lineups, lots of different prices, and it's all collated into one easy place for you. However, bear in mind that agencies take a cut of the fee. That can be pretty much anything from like 10% up to 20%. I have seen it higher, which is just a bit crazy to me, which means that the bands will overall charge a higher fee. So you will end up paying more if you go down the agency route rather than contacting the musicians themselves directly. However, it's worth bearing in mind that an agency may offer some form of insurance so that if anything happens on the day, which means that the musicians are no longer able to get to your event, you have a little bit more of a safety net there. As a musician, I would always recommend that you go directly to the people that you are booking, as this allows for a much easier exchange between the two of you. And it also means that you can kind of get to know each other a little bit, which just adds that personal touch on the day. Also, I have to confess, my experience with agencies, other than my diary service, you guys are the literal best, has not been overly positive. Any time that I've been in an awkward situation at an event or a booking has always been when it's through an agency because you as the performer do not actually have the authority to make decisions on the day. So for example, if something overruns, they will have already paid the money to the agency, which means that organizing an overtime fee can be really, really complicated. So for me, I'm not a massive fan just because like I said, I like to have a little bit more control, I guess, for want of a better word, over my timings and the fees that you're charging and the communication with the client. So yeah, agencies can be great, but they do have their downsides. So if you're not looking through an agency, the best thing to do is just start Googling and look on Facebook because a good well-established band or group of musicians will have pictures, recordings and reviews. And a good thing to know about Facebook pages is that the band themselves cannot doctor the reviews that are shown. So for example, if somebody goes on there and posts a beautifully glowing review, then great, that goes up. But if somebody also goes on that band's page and posts a negative review, review, the band cannot take it down. So Facebook is a good place to go to look for those things because you know that the reviews you're seeing are very genuine and not just a curated kind of cherry picked version of what has been said about that particular group. I cannot stress how important it is to discuss specific timings before your event. Do you want to book the musicians for a specific time frame or are you booking them for the duration of a particular section of the day? Now, this is particularly important when it comes to weddings, because weddings, as we all know, have a bit of a tendency to run on longer than anticipated. So if you've booked your string quartet from one o'clock till four o'clock, then you may be thinking, great, that covers us for the ceremony and for the drinks reception afterwards, all good, all happy days. But what if something overruns? Your musicians are not gonna wanna stay longer than the four o'clock time frame because they may well have other work booked. I've been put in many an awkward situation where a wedding has overrun, One in one case, by three hours and then we've been asked to stay longer and 
you know a fee has been offered for that and all of that all good but we haven't been able to stay longer because we have another booking to get to so cue a very very upset bride and me feeling like a monster so this is something i have absolutely learned from experience but if you are the one booking your musicians make sure that you are very very clear on whether you are expecting them to stay from for example one o'clock in the afternoon till four o'clock or are you booking them from the ceremony to the end of the dinner or the drinks reception, whatever that is. And are you prepared for, if your timings go askew, are you prepared to pay them overtime? Because if you're not, then that's just something to think about and just be aware of so that you can avoid any of those awkward conversations on the actual day of your wedding or your event. All well-organized groups will have a clear policy on this, so it's just a simple case of making sure that you ask the question before the day, because also then you end up with the poor best man trying to sort everything out, and that guy's got enough to worry about already. Now I appreciate most of what I've focused on has been weddings related, just because that is the primary booking that a lot of musicians, particularly string quartets, get. But all of these things apply to any event. Make sure that you have your timings knuckled down, make sure the fee is knuckled down, know how much it will cost you if things start to overrun. Are you gonna feed your band? If they're gonna be there for several hours, then they'll, they'll appreciate it, trust me. Just make sure that you go through all those details before you get to the day of your event and everything will run so much smoother everyone will be on the same page and you'll find that musicians are much more likely to be accommodating we understand that things don't always run to plan that's what happens it's, it's life sometimes people are delayed all of that but just like I said if you are booking professional musicians know that this is their job if you were expected to wait hours later at your job you probably wouldn't be that happy about it particularly if you weren't being paid overtime if you have any any more questions about booking musicians for any kind of event then please please do get in touch all my contact info will be down below no question is silly or stupid ever I will always be very very happy to answer any questions that you have so yeah please do get in touch please do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have enjoyed it I put out videos every week on Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m British Standard Time and it would be great to have you so have a great week I really hope that you are all doing well you're staying healthy and staying vaguely sane can't entirely say that the same can be said here, but you know, we're doing our best. I will see you next week. Have a good one. Bye guys. Good morning everybody and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.